Thank you, Catherine. Well, let's speak to Jean-Michel Grand, Executive Director of the humanitarian charity Action Aid, Action Against Hunger. He's based here in London. Thank you for joining us on the program. Just tell me your thoughts about this effort to set up a maritime aid corridor to Gaza from Cyprus. Hey, good morning. Uh, f first of all, as you said, the situation is extremely uh, critical with all our souls uh, in need of food and uh, especially the northern part of, of Gaza, which is completely cut off and it's extremely difficult, even almost impossible, to access uh, the northern part of Gaza from land uh, by uh, the, aid, uh, the aid agency. So any effort or any possibility to get any form of assistance delivered to, uh, to this population who are at risk of famine is welcome. However, we should be, it should not be at the expenses of the continuous effort to one, lift the, the blockade on aid and especially the road. Let's, let's not forget that the road, Gaza, is only a 25 mile long strip. So that, that's 40 kilometers of road that are between Rafa, the border, till Gaza City in the north. And so. Um that should continue. The effort should be that there should be much more traffic allowed to deliver aid as well. And just tell us a bit more about those challenges with trying to get aid across Gaza by road and what challenges there might be for any aid that arrives on shore. How easy would it be then to then distribute it across Gaza? Uh, if we start by the latter, so it means, as you mentioned about the, the seaports, which uh, as I said, we welcome the initiative, but there is some concern, like the airdrop, is about how we are going to guarantee that we can provide quality and dignity in in the aid delivery and equity. Who is going to receive? How is it going to be possible uh, to guarantee that the population who are going to come and receive aid is going to receive it uh, in full safety? For the moment, we have seen so many incidents where people have been killed. So that. The delivery is one, the distribution is a, a bigger concern for the moment. There is very few, if any, humanitarian organization present in, uh, in North Gaza who will be able to do it in, in, uh, in full safety. So that's one, one concern is about once it's done, how the most vulnerable people are going to get, be guaranteed that they are going to receive uh, a food, which is not the case with airdrop. Airdrop is first thing, first save. So I think that there, there is delivery and distribution uh, that is uh, a big concern uh, with this uh, system and we need to work on. So it means that we need to guarantee security and safety for people who are going to receive as well as the humanitarian organization who are going to be able or should be able to be present and to deliver. And Mr. The Mr. Apologies Sorry. for interrupting. I just want to get this point across because, of course, this weekend marks the start of Ramadan. And just a question about the families in Gaza. What are you hearing about how people are just able to prepare for this um, holy month? The, the major concern is if there are people on the survival. So how are they going to get food when uh, there, there is absolutely no meat, no eggs, uh, no cheese, no uh, sweets, nothing in the market, nothing available. So the only thing that they can find is a bit of wheat, the rice, wheat, canned food, but the food are very, very, is very, very expensive. And uh, people are every day, that's their nightmare nightmares of mothers or fathers about how they are going to feed their families. So they are skipping meal, uh, they are reducing uh, the food, they are even using animal food that they are grounding to try to make some flour. So uh, uh, that's this struggle of daily struggle of getting access to food has to be addressed. And this, there is no other solution than a ceasefire, the release of the air stage, and the lift of the blockade so that aid can uh, be delivered at scale and safely throughout all Gaza. Mr. Jean-Michel Grand, thank you so much for joining us here on BBC News. Thank you very much. Now to news.